Uh, I was just getting gathering uh, gathering details so that uh, I understand your <clears throat> I understand the expectations of everyone who wants to join and the purpose of them joining the classes so that they can modify the actual contents. Right, so some uh, some are here for uh, an actual different topics than the normal Intune topics, and some of them are here for to understand a little me a bit little in depth of uh, the Intune processing and some of the troubleshooting, some of the log files, right? And some are here to understand the products that are integrated with Intune, like you know, so Defender for Endpoint and uh, the Cloud Apps part and uh, some of the ABM VPPs when it comes to mobile device management and uh, a more uh, detailed, uh, though uh, uh, it's not an extensive of wide range of topics, but whatever they know, they wanted to know in deep, right? So with that uh, in thing, I mean, that in mind, so uh, what I will actually be doing today uh, uh, is I'm going to start off with a topic, uh, which is Defender for Endpoint. Okay, so it'll be, uh, since Defender for Endpoint is not exactly a topic that relates to Intune, that's related to, I mean, uh, more of a security, right? So some might know what is Defender for Endpoint and some might not know what exactly is Defender for Endpoint or people not have heard of it at all or they've heard of it and they don't know what to do it. <laughs> so uh, I would request everyone to mute unless you all have any questions. Yeah, so I'm just muting from my end, but I would request everyone to eat. So uh, just like, I mean, people who have attended my classes, I'll definitely, I'm not, uh, I'll not be the person who will just keep on going uh, and explaining not, like a news reader. Uh, so a casual, uh, a, a normal interactive session can help you remember things a lot. Okay, so that's my uh, a way of uh, uh, getting into a class, even if it's one or, one or uh, two hours more. So uh, interaction will help everyone to remember something, okay? So my first question to everyone is, uh, yes, no, is simple thing, okay? So I, uh, is how many have worked on Defender for Endpoint? Uh, and then uh, whoever wants to add, if yes, they can say to what level and to what level of understanding they have a Defender for Endpoint or whoever can uh, just come and say, so what do you all understand by Defender for Endpoint? What is that product exactly? Anyone can unmute and just start the conversation. It's like a security program, like an antivirus. Okay. And anyone else? It's the, it's, yeah, it's the antivirus for the endpoints, like the uh, you know, user devices. Or okay. Yeah. So only antivirus? Anti-malware. Mm -hmm. And then security features like that. Okay. Hi Raj, this is Venkat. Um, so it's a complete security suit um, from Azure, uh, from the cloud product. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in my in my organization, we are just replacing McAfee to Endpoint. We're just migrating. Not not our team. Uh, basically, I'm UC. So the yeah. security team is owning this uh, suit, Endpoint, uh, that one. And they are doing this migration from McAfee to Endpoint. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So all of uh, yeah, all of them here are correct. It is just a security product. Okay, so the only difference is, unlike our traditional security products, uh, this is uh, this and now any other products that is in competition with uh, the Defender for Endpoint uh, is uh, not restricted only to the antivirus and the anti-malware solution. Okay, so it goes beyond the traditional antivirus and the anti-malware solution that we had for all these days. Semantic, McAfee, and all. Okay, they are improving. Okay, but for the last six or seven years, uh, the way the product has evolved from a normal file based scanning mechanism to uh, always live connection. Okay, so the, the endpoints are always connected uh, and sending signals 
back to their cloud services. Okay, it's not an on-premise solution anymore. Okay. Anyone, anyone wants to add something else? Uh, Rohit, you want to talk? Okay, thank you. Okay, so but uh, yeah, some uh, might be very uh, new to this. So what I'll do is, uh, we'll just get familiarized with some of the basic terms when it comes to security. But because if I just start off talking about Defender for Endpoint right away, uh, you might not really uh, get uh, the whole uh, thing and understanding. Okay? So let me share my screen and please confirm if you all are able to see my screen. Okay, so just a second. Yes, Raj, able to see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit and explain all of this, but if you all have time, can start reading it. But I'll just read out. Okay. So it's a very basic term. I hope everyone, since they are experienced, though they are in different teams, different uh, uh, domains. Okay. So you might you might keep. getting all of this okay but simply them if you look at the security threat like you no know, it's just a threat uh, okay my as you see as you can see my internet might st seem uh, unstable i might change uh, my existing internet connection while it would if at all it's disconnected okay so bear with me for like you no know, two or three minutes in between that connection only for this week okay i'm not i'm in a different place so Security threat is just like any threat, okay? So it can be a physical threat, okay? If you are a person, if, some, if someone uh, is going to harm you, it's called as a threat, right? But in his IT field, if it is harming your system, if it is harming your information, okay? If it is uh, harming in any way, okay? Capturing, I mean, stealing confidential data, okay? Or stopping something to work on a system, it's just called as a security threat. The, the word keep on, you keep hearing threat, threat, threat. Yeah, it's a threat. That is disturbing our systems, computers. Our focus is mainly on endpoints, okay? Be it servers or endpoints or our mobile devices as well, okay? A vulnerability, the term vulnerability is nothing but a weakness in something. So we keep hearing the word vulnerability. It is vulnerable. The dictionary meaning of vulnerability is you're vulnerable to something. It's a weakness, right? So uh, if you go to cold, like me, you're vulnerable to cold. Okay, so you're vulnerable to cold temperatures. Right now you get catch, uh, you, get, you can catch cold early. So that is what vulnerable means. It's a weak system. It's a weak immunity, right? So if it's a weak operating system, someone can come and attack you. If it's a weak, uh, software applications where the software code has written in a weak manner so someone can hijack your code and exploit it. So that's a vulnerability. Someone detects a vulnerability, we need to fix those vulnerabilities. You keep hearing, fix the vulnerabilities, fix the vulnerability. It is basically, in our words, in a layman language, it's just, just update a software or update an operating system so that the new operating system fixes that vulnerability, okay? So that is our language, but in software, in, in uh, security terms, vulnerability goes beyond like, you know, what is vulnerable? Is it a file? Is it a single file? Is it a, just a DLL file or how is it vulnerable? Okay. So uh, what, what can the file do? Okay. That file. Okay. Someone captures the file and take that file and then use the escalation of privileges or whatever it is. Okay. So it goes beyond it's their job. A detailed security analysis will go like, you know, from a, uh, uh, college fresher, okay, he'll start learning about all these terms, okay? So, but if you're interested, you can start learning more detailed about high file hash analysis, okay? All of that, okay? So, but for us, vulnerability is just about updating a system so that some of the files gets updated and the vulnerability is fixed. So, so threat actor is again a person, okay? A group, an organization, Russians, Israelis, all they keep hearing, right? So they are the threat actors. 
who actually do the uh, all of this hacking and uh, do all of this ransomware, right? So attack vector, you keep hearing again this word, is the method that is used to execute an attack. Okay. okay. So what method they have used? There are many methods. Okay. So one is uh, remote code execution. You keep hearing that. Okay. So and then the other one is the uh, the email spam emails. Okay. So I'll show. I mean, I will talk about different attack vectors. But uh, a vector is a method. Okay. It's a way it is used to. So incident is again. The, you, you keep again hearing this word, very incident, incident. So what is an incident? It's just one occurrence, okay? It's just one occurrence of actually something has happened, okay? And there are some consequences in your system, okay? An incident has occurred, okay? Uh, but uh, it's, it's a group of alerts, you can say, okay? So incident will become, the terms here, at least uh, in security uh, operations term, we talk about alerts, four or five or 10 alerts and all the, uh, some 100 alerts come to your SecOps uh, console. It means that an incident is created. A similar alerts causes an incident and that incident is very serious which you need to fix it. If it's one or two alerts in a different Wait, system. Wait, so mute, well, guys, can you please mute? Okay, so that's alert, okay, so that's, uh, uh, Sushil, please mute. Okay. So everyone, please ensure that you are muted. Okay. So the na the compromise again is a simple. So if something has happened on your system, it we say that the system is compromised. Okay. So someone has attacked. We keep using the words like you know, if someone hacks your Instagram or Facebook account, say my Facebook account is compromised. So that's the term. So and then national state attack, okay, sorry, nation state attack is just a, uh, conducted on the government organization or a finance organization, okay? So disrupting uh, the military and uh, all of the government, White House hacking, all of that is called usually a nation attack, okay? So again, uh, if something has happened, it has it will be happening only on these three ways, okay? So either users do something wrong Okay, or if it's a poor network, your ports are open, your IP addresses are uh, reachable from outside, you, uh, you are able to reach, okay, your systems are able to attack. Software is again, software is a poor, okay, so of, of course, no matter how uh, security is taken care while developing the software, hackers find a way to uh, break into your uh, both network and software in one or the other way, and hence there is always a continuous work going on both from uh, the operating system uh, security fixing application security fixing and also more advanced techniques are used by the hackers to find out the ways to attack any system okay so we talk about user way user based systems right so it's mostly the compromised credentials okay so we keep saying like you know it's very very important the compromised credentials are very the, the credentials can be leaked anywhere okay say your passwords in your browser Okay, so many other ways. So that is a leading cause. And that's why nowadays people are going passwordless. Okay. So passwordless in the sense like, you know, they're using biometric with MFA. Okay. The reason why imagine like, you know, unless you are there in the system and your phone is there when the system will not be able to log in. Right. So it, it, it gives you some assurance it's better than the leak. So if it's a password, if someone just gets hold of the password you are not even there someone is attacked someone is using your password for doing something else within those few hours before someone tells you that you are you are leaked you are open or he might hold the password and do something up. he there is always they don't attack until everything is gathered okay so that is how all the ransomware happen okay so now ransomware the word ransomware you might hear only when the big bank or a big company is attacked right but every day there are ransomwares happening now it has become just like a normal antivirus, okay? So, and that is all because many people, the almost all the ransomware attacks happen not on the first day, okay? They get into your system and stay into your system for three or four months and see what is critical data. And all at once, they just steal the data, right? So they control more than just stealing, okay? So social engineering, 
again okay sharing something okay talking something in your uh, social media accounts your emails okay so uh, your usb drives okay so connecting usb drive to your system again you take back to your personal laptops and you share it to your friends all of that really has caused so many issues okay so because like you know uh, you bring in a pen drive uh, i mean other uh, usb drive from another system okay so uh, there are some programs which when you connect to a usb drive okay so the programs run steal the credentials and share it to uh, the hacker in the plain text so they'll actually come to know in their programs in which they have created. So phishing is again, uh, it's through an attack email or through a text messages, okay? So which deliver all of the links, right? So they all the emails looks like as if it's an internal email, as if it's coming from Amazon or if it's coming from a trusted site. They all look like exactly your company website and they'll ask you to click, okay? So all that is called as a phishing. So you might see in, with your experiences, uh, like you know, so a lot of, uh, simulation testings or education way of testing it to uh, familiarize what is phishing, what is not phishing in our organizations. Okay, so these are all, all examples of phishing. Okay? They all look Amazon, but if you look at their email account, it's Amazon.com, okay? something like that. So, and this is again uh, how they install the malware, right? So you can just click on the link, and then the malware is installed. Nothing happens. Okay, no one even gets. To know what is happening in the system but some work in the back end keeps on going on so that you uh, get um, attack okay? so this is again what how do we fix it now okay so we have all the information now one of the main uh what is the antidote for it i mean what is the solution the kind of solution is is always say for example a multi-factor authentication okay so go passwordless even if it's password go mfa okay so now caught tongues about network-based uh, attacks Okay. So the term is again, you keep hearing of okay, this uh, denial of service, denial of service, DDoS, DOS, DOS is denial of service, DDoS is distributed denial of service. Okay, So it's just stopping the legitimate users from accessing the systems that you, the, the bill, they, they, they are entitled to use it. Okay, there's another common work for common thing that we, we usually use these words. Okay, so of course we have DDoS protection in Azure, DDoS protection uh, in the M365 security, all of that. Okay? So you can just configure, so usually um, that's done in Azure Firewall. But again, the, uh, the man in the middle attack is again, it's the same thing, a person is there and he, uh, he just hijacks the connection between one user and another user. Okay? So that is the name of the man in middle attack. So usually all of this can be resolved using the VPN connections and the HTTPS connections. So we'll talk about software vulnerabilities, right? So as I was just uh, saying, there's so many applications and so many softwares where they steal data by exploiting the weak code, right? To run the data queries and then we'll, uh, we have some malicious code in the system uh, where they uh, execute some code after gaining some credentials. So you hear the word zero day vulnerability, zero day vulnerability, please patch, please patch my system. Okay, so that is mostly remote code execution. Okay, so other other uh, uh, kind of attacks, my, I mean, uh, there's so many attacks with zero day vulnerabilities, but 80% is other RC, I mean, remote code execution. So again, uh, what is zero day vulnerability and zero day exploit? Okay, so these are the two terms you keep talking to your security team and they come back and say, okay. So the, is that the manufacturer is not aware of until an exploit is in the wild, right? That is in the definition of it, okay? So, and this is manufacturer is not until it is disclosed publicly. That is zero day vulnerability. So that is a zero day exploit. So the growing... Okay, yeah, this is more of a marketing term. Okay, so, but anyways, okay, so this is, attackers are growing, okay? Nowadays, attackers are paid, okay? And uh, per attack, okay? So now, there are ransomware kits to purchase. Like if you don't like something, if you want to attack an organization, so many of the organ, I mean, most of the people who attack and who claim like, no, they say the terrorists claim. They don't know. Do they don't know how to write 
all of these ransomwares, they don't know, right? So they buy ransomware kits. Okay, so based on the extensive of attack, they start paying the per person who uh, write ransomwares. Okay, so we have compromised uh, PCs and devices. Okay, so we have stolen username and passwords out in the public internet. They are sold. Okay, they are sold. So, and then of course, there are so many other applications which uh, allow DOS, DNT DOS. So that is continue to grow. And hence, there are so many cyber security companies who wants to prevent, okay? Who wants to prevent and who sell those applications claiming that we can prevent 99% of the attacks, right? Uh, there are so many other attacks that is happening, but we need also need to uh, prevent all of these. So this is again uh, the term lateral movement, and once, and once uh, this is again now uh, what as you can see in this uh, graphic, right? So it is again uh, as you can see the phishing mail starts, and then he opens an attachment, and then exploitation occurs, and there is a brute force that application finds that the user account is compromised. And he starts collecting all of the information and there is an attacker attempt. He stays here only, he doesn't really do anything else. And then finally, and someday he identifies, okay, I understood your network, understood your system. I know how much of finance uh, benefit I can actually take. And then he'll start exp uh, exfiltering the data after uh, he gets access to the sensitive data and starts uh, demanding uh, ransomware. So yeah, for all the solution, we have always have zero trust principles you keep again hearing the word zero trust in every organization so what does that mean right the dictionary again uh, simple meaning don't trust anyone don't trust your own system don't trust your own application don't trust your own user okay so when you trust less and when you verify every time right every time someone contacts you, every time someone access your system okay don't trust okay so that is the meaning of zero trust principle so we don't trust we will explicitly verify everything before i authorize you to access something so that is the meaning of zero trust okay so again uh not just zero trust that is verification when you're trying to access the resources right what about verification when you're actually using the administrator tools right so again you need to have just in time access and just enough access you keep again hearing these words J jet and jea right so what it means is like, you now you want to execute some change request during a weekend. Okay, uh, I, I, yeah, let me stop here, okay? So most of you all might, uh, this is very uh, old to them, okay? You keep hearing these words, but I just want to finish to, for the completion sake, okay? The reason, because not everyone might understand. Okay, so the, again, this, uh, okay? So this is the least privilege and assume breach, okay? So this is the least privilege is like, you know, if you're in a production environment, if you need access to a system, the security administrator or has a process to provide you exactly for those four hours through I mean uh, in which we are carrying those changes right so and how much access you need they'll ask you like you know how much access you need how long you need okay so whatever the changes based on the change they get approval right from your seniors and the from your management so that is the process you all need to I mean every organization will actually do it uh, sincerely okay not everything is perfect when it comes to just in time access and just in just enough access right so 70% of the time the information is wrong so you want to carry the step for 1 hour but you demand for 4 hours or 5 hours or some some people actually demand for 3 4 hours a non knowledgeable management or a change request manager will approve it right so these, these are very sensitive things in your organization that's happening, okay? Because most of the time, people are non-security managers or non-product uh, uh, domain knowledge, they lack it, and whatever you, are, you say, they would be approving it, okay? So eventually, those processes are just for the namesake, but those processes should, should exist for uh, securing your environment, but they are not. So this is how the malware is designed. Okay, so you execute, you continue the happening. Okay, so how do you protect this? Again, any kind of antivirus solution and frequent definition update. Is that the only thing possible? No, we'll look at it. Okay, so it has to be more than your file-based analysis. 
So a ransomware is again, this is how it actually looks. Okay, you will be given a timer and you'll be given a Bitcoin ID to where you can copy and paste it and transfer the money. Okay, so these are all the simple terms I was just uh, uh, talking about. So at this moment, do you all have any questions? Someone was unmuting. No rush. Okay, so we'll now go to exactly what is now Microsoft is uh, offering as an entire security suite. So how many of you all heard the word Sentinel? I have heard it. Okay, yes. what's, uh, yeah. So we're at a high level, okay, quick in information. What do you know about Sentinel? What, is, what does it do? Why is it there? So it's again like a antivirus for all the servers and all the systems and user devices and uh, oh. like. No, I think you are speaking about Sentinel One. Yeah. No, okay. I'm asking Microsoft Sentinel. Oh, okay. That that is same tool. Yes, you're right. Okay. So anything you want to talk about same the uh, same tool? It's just an event co collector. Okay. So you can just yeah. say log log on it. Okay. Any any other uh, M365 security uh, suite of products that you keep hearing, you know about it? How many of you all know about Defender for Identity? Okay, okay, okay. Defender for Cloud Apps and Defender for Endpoint, which we are talking today. And we have Defender for Office 365. Okay, so, uh we'll see let me share my screen let me know if you're able to see my screen okay so can you see my screen Yes, Raj. Okay. So what you see uh, here is a Microsoft uh, cybersecurity reference architecture. That's how they call it. And uh, it is the complete M365 and Azure security to protect the entire, to secure your organization. Okay. When you actually look at step by step, they're nearly somewhere around uh, 14 to 16 different products that are working together, okay? And out of those uh, 14 to 16 products, uh, the product of our focus is this section that you see here, endpoints and devices, okay? So let's see just at a high level, let's see what we, the reason why I'm, uh, I'm showing you because if you look at the discussion at a very, 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 very uh, high level, okay, uh, the CISOs or the cyber architects decide, uh, they go with if they have if they have if it's a Microsoft shock, they'll try to use as much as Microsoft products alone just to save cost, unless they find a competition product where it is much, much, much better than what Microsoft product achieves. Okay. So might not, some I mean some people might not like Defender for Endpoint. They may go to security, uh, sorry, uh, Sentinel One, CrowdStrike, okay? So McAfee, so this section I'm talking about, some might not like. Some might not like other products like, you know, cloud apps. Yeah. So they, they may go to you know, Blue Coat, okay, or WebSense, okay? So let me uh, uh, talk about these products one by one, okay? So if you look at, we have in the core of it, right, we have, are endpoints itself, the Windows 10 and the Windows 11, the operating system, okay? So if you look at it, inherently, they themselves can be protected somehow, to some extent, right? BitLocker is one thing. BitLocker is not a technology that is happening in the cloud or at your end, okay? It is happening something on your system, okay? Application control. It is something happening on your system to prevent something. You can protect it. 
right? all of the endpoint protection and the policies that we push from Intune or from Defender for Endpoint, okay, is on the system. We just push the policy, we're enabling it, but everything, all of the processing is happening on your laptop. So your operating system inherently can be protected. Okay, so we can do disk encryption, we can do credential protection, and we can even control our network protection or our endpoints. When I said network level protection, not just the browser level protection, we can control at an adapter at a socket level to restrict or to block it. Okay, so with if you look at it, all of these policies, okay, network protection. Okay, by the way, I think the text is very small. Can you all zoom it? Or can you all see it? If you zoom your screens. Yes, Raj. Yeah, okay. So this Windows 10 and Windows 11, right? If you look at all of these protection policies that you see here, the network protection, credential protection, the encryption, attack surface reduction, app control, exploit protection, behavioral monitoring, next. All of this Windows 10. So these are the things that we are controlling. Okay. And these policies that we read all here, there's a some more somewhere else, okay, someone uh, some, some more uh, things that are not there mentioned here. All of these policies can be enabled on the systems. So by default, some are enabled, some are not enabled, some requires additional controls, additional policies on your endpoints. So each term is used in differently, right? When I say app control, application control, do all of the signed application needs to be installed on the laptop or no? Or can I whitelist and blocklist some of the applications? Yes, no. But who, how are we pushing it to hundreds of hundreds of devices centrally? Right? If I have 10,000 devices in my organization, if I want to encrypt, I cannot go and encrypt on all the machines, right? Similarly, and hence we have some central tools like uh, Configuration Manager, Endpoint Manager, or some other tools. So all of these can be done from two different tools when it comes to Microsoft. It is either Defender for Endpoint, which is a standalone solution, or if you integrate Defender for Endpoint with Intune, you can do it with Intune. Okay, so the main, when it comes to endpoints and devices, we have uh, Intune and Configuration Manager. With these two tools, even it, along with integration with Defender for Endpoint, we can configure all of these settings in Windows 10 and Windows 11. Okay, so along with that, when it comes to going beyond our endpoint, we can have EDR solution. So EDR is what the definition, I mean, the main function of Defender for Endpoint. Okay, it is not just detecting something, it is also responding to that threat. So that is how the, how the product has evolved. <clears throat> So eight years back, 10 years back, if you look at all of our products, they would, okay, I'll, I, I, uh, okay. so they would do a file-based scanning, okay? So if people who have used systems for a long time, they, 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 they have Windows 10 or Windows 7 or Windows XP machine, they download McAfee, they download all Norton or any other uh, antivirus software, they need to update the definitions. They need to go to internet and update their definitions and those definitions will be stored in your laptop. And every time you scan your drives or scan your uh, uh, USB drives, they scan against your database, your well, I mean, uh, your uh, definitions, right? If no one has updated definitions for last one month, you will not be able to scan against the last one month's vulnerability. I mean, threats. Okay, so that is the old way of traditional file-based scanning. Okay, so companies like Sentinel One and CrowdStrike, they started it a different way. Okay, they started a cloud-based servicing. Okay, you don't have to maintain their servers now. Okay, you don't have to do anything. They are doing cloud-based monitoring where your endpoints are all mostly connected to your cloud in a different way. And I say they're not always connected, okay? Your agents has a capacity to send signals based on the behaviors, okay? So that's how it evolved, okay? So when I say behavioral monitoring, you say, for example, you are trying to run a PowerShell script with some administrative privileges, which is changing the system files. 
right? But based on the behavior, okay? So it observes, uh, like, you know, what is he doing? What is he changing? Okay, it's modifying some registries. If it is modifying, it, it, it the intelligence is, it is appearing to harm your system. That is when a signal goes to your cloud services. So that is where the CrowdStrike, Sentinel-1, all these products, right? They came into, uh, I mean, they appeared like something new. Right and later defender for endpoint entered, but entered and entered in with a boom. And then, if you look at why you actually need to uh, see, uh, oh, sorry, where I can. So these are all the um, and okay. So if you look at why you need to study of the defender for endpoint, it's again the same reason, just like any other Microsoft product. So fortunately or unfortunately, Defender of Endpoint is now the market leader. Okay, so it started beating. Uh, I can't hear you, Rajiv. Yeah, we lost you, Raj. Mm -hmm. How about now? Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, you're back, I think so. Sorry, I think I actually entered spacebar, which muted. Sorry. So, okay, I don't know where I stopped. But again, yeah, so what I was explaining here. Yeah, my defender for endpoint is beating all competitors. I think you're saying something. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then I didn't, I think I did not lose for a long tough time. So that is what I was saying, like, no, just like any other Microsoft products, uh, though, like you know, six years back, when you look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant, uh, Defender of Endpoint was a niche player, right? So now it is a, a industry leader. Okay. So the reason, are, there are multiple reasons. Okay. They know about their own operating systems. They have the budget to invest something. They have the budget to buy other products. And uh, they have people. Okay? And uh, their licensing cost. Okay. Their integration of all, all the other, all the products that you see here in this slide. All that makes it easier for Microsoft to take that leadership and the driving seat when it comes to any product. Okay. So what you see here is we are only talking about endpoints and devices. Okay. So uh, just to rephrase, endpoint and endpoint, uh, the Microsoft solution is Intune and Configuration Manager. With these two, you can actually define the entire Defender for Endpoint product policies. Okay. From Intune and Configuration Manager and deploy it to those endpoints. Okay, and those endpoints will start reporting to a service called as same Defender for Endpoint. It's a cloud-based service. So your console, your front end, your administrator uh, administration tool is Defender for Endpoint. Your endpoint is your uh, the endpoints itself. And now we are going beyond Windows devices. So we are going Windows clients. We are going servers now. Like you now, after one year, we started with servers. After two years, we started with Android and iOS, recently Mac and Linux, right? So no matter which operating system you have, you will be able to install the Defender for Endpoint agent and protect it. And all that with a single one license, you can use up to five users pro endpoints. So that kind of licensing is not there with other competition and the price is less. So that is, uh, this is uh, the cyber, uh, what you see, and there it goes beyond that. Okay, the entire thing, what you see is the hybrid infrastructure, right? So this is, again, comes under the Azure security, which is a complete different topic, complete different. It comes under the infra, infra infrastructure security. Okay, that is where you have Azure Arc and Defender for servers. Okay, so the defender for server is to protect both Azure servers and the third party cloud servers. Because as soon as you have a virtual machine in any of the Azure or the third party products, you can onboard it to defender for servers. So that is your defender for server product. And Azure Arc is again monitoring the vulnerabilities uh, vulnerabilities within your operating systems is a third party, I mean, uh, within the third party products as well. 
we have app proxy again you i mean uh, yeah it has uh, you might start using it if you have an uh, index and pki service so app proxy is like a reverse proxy okay so it's a uh, where you can it basically translates the public url to the internal url okay you can say like you know if you someone wants to contact this particular server though the server address is like you know vpn dot my dot your company dot com you don't want to expose that url you can use a replacement url kind of a thing so it's proxies that it, it uh, proxies that okay so anyways that's not our topic of discussions uh, today so you keep hearing all of these words like nice your key vault okay so where you store your uh, certificates and keys your web application proxy all of these is a different technology if at all you all want to pursue the security space this is a wonderful uh, uh, technologies that you can learn okay so again our focus is only here endpoints and devices so coming back we have something called as conditional access okay so this is a infrastructure and now we are we protected our infra which is our servers and now we are protect our endpoints okay endpoints and devices and hybrid infrastructure and then uh, the infra itself and now we'll also have to protect some information that is already there right so who hosts all of the emails so 1999 sorry 99% of all the emails in this world today is hosted by microsoft exchange online okay so you'll see the market share of 2 3% between gmail and some other uh, services but uh, number wise it's it's 99% okay so everyone has to protect their exchange online emails okay so everyone has to protect their onedrive data sharepoint data because why because they are residing somewhere in the microsoft cloud and someone is accessing from your organization okay and now you will have third party services so azure ad is the core of your identity right so is your iam solution of microsoft Okay, so people might have Okta, people might have all of all the other things, but Azure AD, which is now Entra ID, the renamed it as Entra ID, is your core identity and I mean uh, identity and access management solution for almost every Microsoft backend service, right? So that is including uh, Intune, including Office, including every other other uh, other products, right? So if you are an Intune administrator, you need to know Azure AD and how much ever you want to know, about, uh, how much ever you know Azure AD, it's good, it's better. So it is a fundamental concept to understand any cloud service. You should be knowing what is Azure AD, you should be knowing what is Azure AD PIM, you should, you should, uh, you should be knowing what is uh, the Azure AD Connect, okay? To going to the next level, you should be able to know what is identity protection, and you should be able to know very easy B2B and B2C, where you are enabling interactions and collaboration with your third party vendors. Right? You uh, need to add you your... used, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you use Azure AD, then Azure AD PEM. Uh, I didn't get the word. PIM, I'm saying privileged identity access, privileged identity. Yes, you're ready, Pim. Okay, here it is written. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, anyways, we'll just uh some topics we'll be discussing here. Okay. So that is your Azure AD and its protection. Okay. We're only talking about securing our own infra. What is our own infra? First is identity, and we need to protect it. Right. So some uh, so I can tell the user. Okay. Be very careful of your username and password. Okay but he, he may not listen or he may not know. So it's our duty to protect it. And we have a product called Defender for Identity. If it has any signals to protect their identities, like, you know, you all know about this uh, leaked credentials, dark web and all, right? Dark web is where they sell your credentials. They are actually your username and password is known, okay? And you can grab it. So. All of that signals, all of that information, Azure Defender for Identity will identify. And when it identifies, it automatically prompts the end users to change the password, to verify something. You'll have a stricter controls. And you as an admin will also have uh, reports and alerts of who are compromised accounts. So we have 
risky sign in users and risky users risky users are those users whose credentials are could be compromised okay remember the difference the word risky users are the users whose credentials could have been compromised the second thing is the reason why i am telling you all of this is, is you might hear this word someone might not be able to access a laptop someone might not be able to access their intune uh, not be able to sign in at all and suddenly when you investigate you will see that user is a risky user it means that azure ad administrator has to approve to further proceed for even the sign in to work right so the risky user is the one which in azure ad is identified as risky user and it is masked marked as a risky user because he the user appears to be risky for many reasons based on the azure ad own algorithms and intelligence next we have risk sign in uh, risky sign ins the user is not risky but he keeps on signing in uh, he or someone else okay so he'll sign for one month okay so or uh, for last three days he's been signing in from bangalore within one hour he'll be signing in from usa so that is a risky sign in like you know you will keep hearing the word again impossible travel suddenly you are here suddenly within 5 minutes you are signing in from russia so that is automatically azure ad will identify and mark it as a sign in risk and it will you have two actions okay again you will create uh, rules where you will say like you know verify it again using mfa and if it does it again that is when you mark the identify as a risk user and block it okay all those rules is a different product and that is called defender for identity so people buy it or people don't buy it is a different thing so we used we talked about two different products one is defender for endpoint where it is used to protect our endpoints and now we are defend defender for identity where we used where we need to protect the identity of the users okay risky users and sign in users and also not just that okay so we, additionally anyone who is signing in we have our own policies okay the pim privileged access identity manager okay who wants access the r back so everything comes under the identity protection okay so that is by default you do get it for free but if you want to if you pay you will get some additional benefits you will have some access reviews right so okay those are all advanced topics so access reviews are uh, like you know you joined an organization today over the course of one year you will get access to so many things right you will get to access to that server this server those sites these sites okay and over after one or two years you will have access to so many things but do you really need access to so many things you might need access for only one time but you did not go and tell your administrator block my access right so those all the things imagine if it's a 50000 user organization right he gets access to so many all those 50000 users have access to so many sharepoint sites so many websites so many uh, salesforce accounts all of these access they have so many servers so many service accounts they have you need to i mean do some governance to control that right that is a day to day security iams job to run that uh, to use the access review feature where you camp do a campaigning and tell the users that like do you need all of those access mark me okay ask the manager all those are automated tools okay they will send a i mean uh, the tool will send an email to the manager asking us do they need all of these so my manager's job he it's a mandatory thing for him to do the access reviews that is where you start limiting control to access all of those systems right so that is your identity protection tool okay so now we have another thing called as your office defender for office 365 it's your third defender suite product so that is again handled by exchange team exchange online team or your sharepoint admin team and all and that is to protect your emails to protect your sharepoint data and to protect your uh one drive itself right so if you look at that tree i mean if you look at that uh, cloud data so that is where uh, you do and now the third one that I means sorry the fourth one you have defender for cloud apps 
okay so i'll just take a break one minute break when i'm giving you uh, thinking like no anyone uh, heard of what is defender for cloud applications because it's a common people use it or similar product they use it and people with intune admin intune also might have used it so any idea what is defender for cloud apps I heard that name uh, Raj, but don't know what it actually does. Uh, but I heard. Okay. Mm, okay. So the okay, you might uh, most of your uh, companies might have uh, installed products like Blue Coat or WebSense, right? So if you're trying to access Google Drive on your laptop. Blue code will block access to it or any other cloud application. Dropbox, Box. Why? Because they don't want you to upload your uh, files to your public accounts, public drives. So the term in IT, uh, they use something called a shadow IT. So shadow IT is uh, the things that you all do because it's a cloud application. Okay, it all started with 10 years ago, right? There was nothing like uh, shadow IT at all 15, 20, 20 years back. So it all started like, you know, 10, 15 years back uh, when uh, the shadow IT tools started coming into picture. Why? Because earlier, if you want to save something, there was nothing like cloud drives. Okay, So it was only your email and nothing was accessible outside of the public. Now you have internet access and you have uploading capacity, uploading uh, products where you can push information to the cloud. Okay, not necessarily always Box, Dropbox and Google Drive. It could be your Salesforce. You, okay, you're, you, there are policies where even if it's a Salesforce, you'll not be able to upload Salesforce data from your laptop. Okay, that could be blocked. Your Salesforce data file should be attached from your Salesforce uh, repository itself or attachments or someone shared their links. Okay, all those policies will be in control. The point of the entire Defender for Cloud Apps is to monitor your interaction from your laptop to your cloud apps. So it sits like a proxy in between. Okay. And you'll not be installing any proxy server here. You'll not be installing anything. The beauty of this entire Defender for Cloud Apps is or any defender. The reason why, see, okay. The reason why defender is so easy to do it is you don't have to install an agent. Okay, for any of these that you see here on an endpoint, whether for defender for Office 365 to work, defender for identity to work, endpoint manager, or even the compliance manager section, or even the, uh, sorry, uh, MCAS, I mean, defender for cloud apps, none of the products require an agent to be installed on your machine. Right. If you go to Cloud CrowdStrike, they need to install an agent, and their administrators have to ensure that agents are up to date. Okay. If um, they release a product, they release a feature, and they'll tell they'll come with a documentation saying that even agents have to be updated. Okay. So here, sorry. So Raj, so this uh, defender for cloud apps does that actually? Um work on the end point itself like i want to block let's say google drive for the users so i can just cre create a policy to block google drive completely and it will block on the end points right yes okay the way it actually works okay so the way it actually works is where every time you try a browser okay so it redirects to a site called as mcas site your cloud app site Okay, so that is where you get block access. And the block doesn't, that block, the agent will now get a policy to not allow uploading of the data. And every time you just drag and drop a file on your Google Drive, it'll show as blocked. You'll not be able to, your administrator has re restricted access. Okay, so if a device is boarded to a uh, like defender, yeah? So it anyways, like uh, all the traffic goes through mm -hmm. this uh, MCAS, yeah? No. Uh, you, 
not defender okay i want to get clarity here defender for endpoint onboarding is different only these things work okay. you also need to onboard the device or enable the device to monitor it okay so that is where you onboard the agents to defender for cloud apps okay so and if if they are like if i have let's let's say onboarded the device on defender for cloud apps all the traffic will i mean i'll be accessing it will go through the mcas like the it will be monitored no traffic, no, right? no again not all the traffic not all the traffic the apps that you mentioned okay okay for blocking and for processing and now if you want every I mean, because it is a monitoring thing all of the monitoring information and log signals that you said the traffic won't go there it only sends you the information okay the, the signals the information that sends you it only sends it here to the cloud apps everything that you do there is something called as a sense agent or the defender agent on your windows machine based on the features that you activate that information or the signals will be sent to the uh the, their respective service yeah but then it i mean the whole traffic will be monitored anyways right and then if it finds the uh, anything yes. related to my policy yes. it will send the signal to uh, back the to traffic cloud, right? yes the traffic will be monitored here right but the blocking will not happen there because or nothing if you upload it will not go there and block it will be blocked right away on the machine right right so anything i've created the policy to block uh, it will send the the signal and will be blocked right yes right okay so whatever you you are using on the system this product should know and then your administrator will come and think okay okay this this guy is using all of these product is it okay or no right okay. he'll monitor all of that and then he'll some say okay oh he's using geo cloud which is not good because uh, recently we found something okay i'm mean, just giving an example so that is where you can block geo cloud across your organization okay and the next time he tries to access something geo cloud won't work Okay, and are we going to discuss uh, this thing, uh, Defender for Cloud, cloud apps. apps, in detail? Yeah, or yeah. is it only for uh, like only for endpoint? Yeah, uh, it depends. Like you know, if you all want majority, okay. So, but, but like you know, the topics that I already have is huge. Okay, so but right. the all of this five six, including Sentinel, is where I'm actually having another session. Which okay. is only M three sixty five security. Okay, so that when I tried it, though we said twenty hours, it went for twenty eight hours, which I think, uh, like you know, it will go for three months. So I was just okay. thinking. See, that, you know, the the point, different. yeah, the the point is actually I understand for like defender for uh like the what is it called the M M three sixty five yeah that's a different product altogether or probably as a Intune administrator I would never need that that's a uh, Which different one? team uh, uh, for 365 defender for 365 yeah for uh, that, that's a different product yeah office yeah defender for okay. office mm -hmm. that's a different product yeah but then uh, probably for defender for cloud apps it's kind of looks like it's, it's it, it is kind of related yeah to our systems that we are managing I think I don't know like about the others uh, probably I yeah, would like uh, to at least touch touch upon it and you're get right. a okay. so understanding saying, yeah. yeah yeah you're right so in that yeah, right. you're absolutely right yeah so yeah so in that way like you no know, even this will come some one or the other way they are related to the endpoints okay see yeah uh we'll definitely cover that okay so if that is your requirement if someone feels its requirements we'll just accommodate okay so yeah i i know the challenge why people uh get that uh uh, difficulty in grasping this point because there is no proper uh, flow in which they educate okay so though you sit and read people won't get it okay so uh, yeah we'll just cover okay so i'll show you a path on how what is this product how do we configure what is the flow of moving okay so that it's easy okay yeah that that's all we need actually at least yeah okay yeah, yeah no problem uh, just remind me if at all i miss okay so but we'll do it in first few days okay sure thanks the same thing goes with information protection okay so you have uh sensitivity labels right all of your documents that you see you'll have this confidential all of this okay so this is an again a, a widely spoken topic today because of copilot right so your data governance and advanced e-discovery all of this 
is a massive massive topic uh yeah maybe it's an extension of your uh, sharepoint one drive exchange online team but it is if you want to go beyond into an endpoints uh, you can actually you don't have to go to office 365 and uh, do administration there but it is very inform uh, very 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 career growing uh, technology when it places nothing but compliance manager again they have renamed into purview so again a p e r p r p e r p e r v i u i think okay so this is again very important today why because a, uh, the copilot get is getting access to almost all of your office 65 data right sharepoint or one drive so you will be questioned as an endpoint administrator to some extent like you know what access i have what are the files so it's very good to understand this okay so that is about the compliance manager and now um, we again now uh, uh yes uh, okay Sure, yeah. So this is, we discussed about uh, information protection, A AD, and then cloud apps. Uh, yeah, this is again on a com completely a different topic. We don't have to discuss this. So this is your uh, Defender for Cloud. And then finally, all of this information, whatever you see in all of these, every product is designed to send out logs to this collector, okay? It's a same in the SOAR tool, right? It's a collector. And this is the database of most of almost all the data and where we can actually process it. And that is where we have threat experts. Threat experts are again the people who log in to Sentinel or to find in Sentinel, either through API or through personally or through Kusto queries or any other queries. This is where they query all of the data that is sent here. So we'll again, uh, it's again in an infra infrastructure tool. The security guy or an infra guy will have more information on this. It's actually technically belongs, Sentinel belongs to your uh, infrastructure. So they would, again, it's a huge tool where it requires at least one year or two years of training. Okay, a proper experience guy. If you really want to go advanced, okay. So any questions in this entire picture? I probably will not come back here. It's very important. Uh, the only reason why, because your organization to some extent someone in your uh, conversation might use the word yeah mcra so mcra is nothing but microsoft cyber security reference architecture and this is uh, multiple products work together to protect okay something that's it again uh, raj, uh, raj i had a question actually yeah uh, my question might be quite a uh, beginner level because i have no idea of microsoft defender for endpoint so uh, is it a separate portal or is it included in the Intune? In it's a separate portal. portal. Yeah, it's a separate portal. Okay, and will we be learning about it through yes. portal as well? Yes. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. So that when I see, when I when we when cover topic, right, you will uh, get full understanding. What I am doing today is pure pure basics, pure theory. Okay. okay? Sorry, yeah. Because if I directly go to portal. And if I start using the words, oh, these are the alerts, these are the kill chain and all, you'll not understand. Or mm -hmm. if I if I open the portal today, like, you know, if let me show and show you today so that you'll get the feel. Raj, the picture which you are showing, right? That's MCRA, right? The entire yeah, 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 MCRA. And you will go to ak.ms slash MCRA, you'll get advanced, I mean, the latest one. Oh, okay. So it's available. Everything is available publicly. There's nothing that I have that you, you don't guys have, okay? Yeah. So I'll share anyways, anything. So, okay. People with experience already know intune.microsoft.com is the uh, Intune portal. But security.microsoft is the, sorry. Security.microsoft.com is the portal for at least five security products. Okay, so the console that you see here. Okay, sorry. Uh, am I, sh I mean, I'm sharing, right? You all are able to see? Yes. 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 Okay. So the console that you see here is. Uh, sorry, I don't have the screen. How to minimize? Okay. Is uh yeah it's been uh the security dot is the console. And the things that you see on the left-hand side is a 
all the five products that I discussed. It's a uni, uh, unified console for almost uh, your five products. Okay, so let me minimize this, this, this. Okay, so it's a massive product. It's a massive, massive subject to learn in detail. Okay, that one thing I can assure you, it will take at least three years to understand and to become at least like to some extent, Okay, two years proper production experience I'm saying. Okay, but if you start using it, you'll get, if you are good enough to understand some of the concepts, so you will again uh, find it easier. Okay. Uh, what do you see? This is a dashboard. This is a home dashboard. Okay. So these are all the things that I have not even uh, attempted to do it. Okay. So now, because if I show the screen today, I'll, I am very confident that if I tell you, see guys, yesterday we were speaking about your SaaS apps like Google Drive, all this uh, OneDrive. So this is where you connect your SaaS apps. It says Defender for Cloud. When you read it, Defender for Cloud Apps protects your SaaS applications with security, configuring recommendations, threat protections, or not. So you just click on connect your SaaS apps. So this is where we will start seeing because this is my first set setup. Okay. Okay. So when I say, I mean, what do you see? Because it's a first batch. And I think this is the environment I'm using it for the second uh, team. So I may have some of the data here, but this will always take time for the first time. So this is now creating an instance for your tenant and giving me all of this information, okay? So everything that you see here is the main menu. And once you click on settings and cloud apps, it now starts to see your app. So connect an app, okay? So by default, we should be able to connect our Office 365 apps, right? But what you see here are the just the popular apps. Atlassian, Box, Cisco WebEx. When I click Cisco WebEx, it means that you'll start monitoring your Cisco WebEx in a proper way and you can control policies for that. So that someone in your WebEx discussion, someone might share a confidential file, right? You should be able to block it. Citrix share file, document signing, Dropbox, Ignite, GitHub, Google Cloud Platform. All these are cloud applications. ServiceNow, Slack, okay, Zendesk, Zoom. These are all popular application, okay? So uh, you can go and add many, many different applications, okay? So you can search and you'll get it, okay? These are very, uh, I think if you go down, suggested more apps, if you click on this, this will open up another web page uh, where you can click more applications, okay? Or you can uh, just Raj, search I it. I had a question. Yeah. Like these applications are applied to users? Uh, based on users, do we push certain uh, security updates policies yes. for that? Yes. Okay. So it, it's eighty percent of the time it is only users. It is user based. Okay. Yes. Okay. Device based it, it can be also, but I think user based here. Is... Yeah. Yeah. One question. Uh, can you please uh, help us to understand about the licensing requirement? Uh, okay. for... I will, I will, I will, definitely I will. Okay, so it's again a uh, very important thing that's in the agenda. Okay, but I was just showing this screen for people who want to just see the feel of how it actually works. Okay, so even so this, is how the, sorry, this is the default. Raj, I have a question. Uh, in MD 102 last session we had it the last uh, time you shown me makes a defender on Indian portal right but the one makes a different right now you're showing is different one right mm, yeah see th that is an integration right if you go to endpoint security mm -hmm. and click on uh, defender for endpoint this is setting up in tune to defender endpoint connection uh, okay okay so what it means is you see all of these policies, right? These are all endpoint yeah. defender security policies. Also, it doesn't whatever you create, you'll okay. Endpoint and sorry, uh, sorry, endpoints and then configuration management. You can create the same policies even here also. The endpoint mm -hmm. security policies. 
Okay. Okay, you can either create it here or create it there. If you create it there, it'll sync there. If you create it there, it'll come here. It's the same thing. Okay. But you can use this product as a separate tool for only security policies. You see, I have two policies. Okay. Okay. And if I come here, I'll find the same two policies here also, which is the one. This is uh, onboarding Windows 10, Windows 7. If I click here, EDR, I'll find the same policy. Uh, sorry. Summary onboarding Windows 10, Windows 11 policy that you see here. It's the same policy that was here also. And now Defender Antivirus, I can come here and click on Antivirus policy. It's the same policy that you see there. I'll, if I edit here and delete here, it also be deleted here. Like now I'll show you right now today. I'll click on this. And I, assuming that I delete this policy here today. And if I refresh here, after some time, even this will be deleted. Okay. So then both are same. Both are same. Mm -hmm. The UI is a bit uh, there and this it's the same. Now I refreshed. It should possibly go. Okay. You will have only one policy. See here that is gone. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But okay. okay. So but mm -hmm. this is more in depth. Okay. So you will mm -hmm. you will be amazed to see what how much of information this console has. Uh, as I said, this is a very, very, very uh, in depth product that you see. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, this console security.microsoft.com is a suite of these four products, right? Cloud apps, device discovery. Okay. So that's not a product, but that's a part of a feature where you enable and enable. And then endpoints, your defender for endpoints, email and collaboration, Office 365, defender for entity, and defender for cloud apps. So this is a master page, home page. And if you click settings, you will see all of this. And if you click endpoints again, this only talks about the features within the Microsoft Defender. Okay. And here, when you click on endpoints, this console for anyone in this world will be a bit slow. Okay. And by the way, the license that you see here is advanced license. It's a P2 premium 2 license. You will get pre P1 license for free, but P2 license, you won't get it for free. Okay. So, okay. Anyways, uh, I'll talk about licensing. So, yeah. So this again is our advanced features. Again, when you scroll down, you'll find so many of advanced features. You will see enable, disable of tamper protections, all of this. Okay. So anyways, uh, I don't want to confuse this. I just showed the thing. Okay. So let me share my screen again. BitLocker oh. also will come under this uh, Defender for Endpoint, Raj. BitLocker. No. No. No, no right? Okay. It's a... Uh, uh, yeah, sorry about this XDR thing. Yeah, is it? Uh, uh, is it? Is XDR connected to um, our uh, Defender Suite? Okay. So what is XDR? Um, again, I don't know a lot about it. So it's like, uh, yeah. So as it says, it's the detection and remediation uh, tool. Okay. I think. Okay, so, okay, when you see here, right? So, okay, mm. let me show here. So, the name uh, is more of a fancy name, okay? So, they're all marketing yep. terms. Okay? So, XDR is an extension, it says extended detection and response, okay? So, what we say EDR is endpoint detection and response, right? So, XDR is an extended detection and response is their term. So what they are saying is our Microsoft Defender is not just the EDR solution. It's our extended defend, uh, detection and threat. We are not only detecting threats in your endpoints, we are also detecting and responding to threats that are there in your cloud applications, that are there in endpoints, that is there in your office, emails, infrastructure, your platforms, okay? So let me tell you, there is something, okay? If you Google it, I just spoke about four defenders today or five defender for endpoints. You know, there are nearly 25 defenders. Defender for IoT, defender for Kubernetes, defender for DevOps, defender for, uh, uh, I don't remember, okay? Everything, defender for everything. Whatever, defender for PaaS, defender for uh, your uh, SAP, 
okay if you are over hosting your sap services there again a different for it okay so there are nearly 25 okay just google it after this class uh, list of different product products in microsoft you will say so what they are basically saying is i'm not only protecting all day i'm extensively protecting i'm doing a extended detection and response and our solution that's why we called as xdr it's a marketing term okay it's more of uh, like you know showing wow factor for the sales team of microsoft okay that is it okay what you see here in this umbrella you will see i am protecting cloud i am protecting endpoint office and uh, identity saas apps and more it says i am more okay ot iot sql sql for databases yeah. okay so so many so, other products that is here. so this is so this is i mean this is not a tool it's just the uh, it's not a tool a, a, a selling point for them right yes, it's, yes. It's, it's it's not a tool the tools are all here okay, okay. in other words the tools are only three consoles compliance.microsoft.com security.microsoft.com and uh, uh, in the azure portal all of the security the defender cloud okay, okay. one question so, from my side um how are we going to yeah. follow the how are we going to gain the access to the intune for uh, training purposes okay uh Okay, who 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 has the same question? Who don't have access to their own Intune test tenants uh, or uh, any other? I mean, some people are very comfortable working with their customer tenants or doing testing. Some are have their own tenants. Uh, who don't have their own test tenants? I have my tenant, uh, Intune tenant as well created. But Defender, I haven't worked on, so not sure. Okay, so I'll show you how to uh, get it. Okay, so you can just go to admin.microsoft.com, okay. buy a trial license. Okay, so I'll show you that. I'll show you in upcoming classes. Again, uh, I want to think so that one at one point I want to explain that. When I'm talking about licensing and tenants, I'll uh, discuss uh, so question, uh, answer that one. Okay. So the thing about licensing, okay, since we are in this point, we'll discuss about licensing, okay? Mm. Okay, so the next, uh, okay, any questions on this entire slide? I don't want to move forward today. So this product itself, I'm planning to take it for nearly six to seven hours, okay? I'll cons uh, put it in a important, okay? This is again a 20 hour thing. But we'll put it, we'll try to do it in six hours so that we focus on the other important things. So let's go to licensing. Anyone has idea of Defender licenses? Okay. So though it is a little bit of our uh, our agenda is more of advanced, but since it's a Defender, uh, is a new thing. So we will definitely need to cover uh, for Defender for uh, endpoint licenses also, right? In the MD one zero two class, you have shown the license. You have shared that PPT itself, uh, where we yes. can uh, buy. Uh, depends upon our requirement. In yeah. means we need to buy that E five something like that. You you told me correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. In tune starts from I think you you have business premium if you are going with business, and then I think uh, enterprise E two uh, E three and E five you get the in tune along right. And then I think with E3 and E5, you get P, I think uh, with E3, you get uh, P1 and with E5, you get P2, I think as far as I know. Yes. So let's just uh, talk about uh, licensing. Okay. So um, we have something called as enterprise plans. Okay. And we have something called as business plans. So usually, normally, uh, with any M365 product, there is some, you'll keep hearing E3, E4, E5, sorry, E3 and E5, right? So that is enterprise plans. 
that is meant for organizations who have about 250 endpoints. Okay. And for those companies who have less than 250, Microsoft recommends to go with the business plans. Okay. M365 business. M365 enterprise. So two main important uh, items to understand. Either you are a business plan customer or you are a enterprise plan customer. And now within enterprise, you have E3 and E5. Okay. And within E3 and E5, it depends what plan you have. Okay. So that is your main M365 subscriptions. <coughs> Sorry. Any confusion there? You get at least this. I mean, uh, you understood till here. Any company will have E3 or E5. Yes. Okay. So because you have E3 and E5, so now E3 comes with some products and E5 comes with some other products. Okay. Does E3 come? If you buy E3, will Intune come? Yes. If you buy E3, will Defender for Endpoint come? We don't know. Now let's check. So now this is our def overview of Defender for Endpoint. When you come here and if you click on Defender for Endpoint in this di direction, it talks about the feature. It comes here and let's see what is the prerequisites for it. Which come okay. This talks about all about the capabilities. Okay, cross platform. And now uh overview defender for endpoint uh license, right? Let's check. I'm just showing you how to start, how to check everything. Okay. So it doesn't come here, we don't have here, and then we just check. Okay, so where do we check? So we say Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And then we'll come somewhere here, getting started. What's new? Deployment guide, migration guide, somewhere here, nowhere. Uh, what is Defender for Endpoint? Plan one. So this is Defender for Endpoint Plan one. And okay, again. You can search for licenses, I think. In the search. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just checking. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I'll show. Okay, so just a second. Okay, so or else you can just go for E3, E5 plans and start from there. Okay, so for confusions like this, we have something called as a master page where you'll not know what licenses I have, all, all this, nothing is covered obvious. Where do I search? Okay, I don't know where to search. Oh, oh minimum requirements. What does it say? Licensing requirements. And now in the licensing requirements, again, I have... Defender for plan one and plan two or defender for business. Now, what is plan one and plan two? If I click here, I'll get it. And now what is defender for business? I'll get it. So assuming I'm clicking for defender for business, this is a product. Do we have to buy it or will it be part of my E3 or E5 subscription? It will not be a part of E3 and E5. It will be a part of business subscription. So again, with the business, you have standard and premium. Correct. Just like how I have E3 and E5 for enterprise, within the business, I have business and the business standard. That is your M365 business, I'm saying. Now you have to check your product whether Defender for Business is covered or not. And when you are doing it, you'll come to always know that Defender for Business compare it to Defender for Business Premium. So this is Defender for Business and this is M365 Business Premium. So if you see, these are all the features that I get, but here I see Microsoft Intune as well. Okay, and then this is the M365 licensing guide for security and compliance. Okay, and you'll see again, see a lot of confusion, right? What we'll, what we'll actually do instead of all of this, right? I'll show you some thing, okay? Which I'll be sharing it to you, very simple, because the documentation for licensing could be confusing. And for that, we have something called as plan comparison uh, for it. So, and there are some third party tools also. Okay. You can always check. Very, very, very uh, confusing subject. Okay. So, very, very confusing subject. So, that's where people have written their own blogs about licensing. So, let me share my screen again. Okay. So, what do you see here? 
is my uh, enterprise plans. So this sheet is the only savior of any licensing uh, questions that you have. Okay, let me explain this sheet. sheet. So this talks about Microsoft 365, Office 365, EMS, and Windows 11 subscriptions. All products that we want talks about licensing. But when, when you look at this, we have Microsoft e, uh, 365, E3, and E5. 90% of the organizations either have E3 or E5. And we have F1, F3, F5, F, all this F. F is nothing but the frontline worker plans. Okay, E is enterprise plans. F is frontline workers. It's a different way of licensing where only the frontline workers are given. So a frontline is nothing but uh, a person who is there in the shops. Field workers. Field workers, right? So in the kiosk consoles, like you know, who use only devices, that, but they don't know anything. They'll not even log in. They are given a device to use. Those are all, their licenses are very cheap. Uh, that's your FN and FLAN. But uh, again, so since it's majority is E3 and E5, so let's see what is E3 and E5 covering. So M365 apps, okay? So this is a big page, okay? So it has somewhere around uh, 10 pages. Then this discusses the entire M365 products. So what is M365? Again, it is a mixture of Office 365, your Windows operating system, and your security products that are covering your uh, the modern work suite, which is your Windows endpoints and your collaboration data, your Office 365 on drive. So all these six, all these three or four things constitute a M365 license. It doesn't include Azure VMs and all, okay? It doesn't include any other thing. It is only in SaaS-based services that Microsoft is offering for productivity. So desktop client SaaS, it's, see everything is again in detail, okay? So again, M365 web is cloud. Okay, so this talks about the, your applications. Are you right? Do you have the right to install and use applications? The, this screen talks about it. You have the right to install Office applications. And then email and calendaring. The terms are different. When they say email, calendar, and scheduling, it means that all of these tools, Outlook, Exchange, Exchange Data Protection. You see, E3 and E3 and E5, the first two columns, are covering up to 100 GB mailbox. You can archive up to one PDF. So this is Exchange Plan 2, you'll get it. And there is something called Exchange Plan 1, but only this guy gets it. Who is this guy? This guy is E1, Office 365 E1. Very basic, right? So now we talks about meeting calls and chatting, which is nothing but your Microsoft Teams. That's a main product. And within the Microsoft Teams, you'll get some advanced options, right? Record meetings, Teams phone standard. You see, only E3 has, E3 doesn't have, E5 has. Similarly, now comes to SharePoint. See, SharePoint has 2 GB for E3 and E5 plus 1 TB storage. Next comes the con content services, right? Which are lists, Dell, SharePoint, Search, all of these applications. Next comes the project. Do you see Planner and Microsoft To Do has there? Okay. Not, I'm not talking about the project management. So every company will have a planner and to do. Use it or use, not use it, different thing. Then, then comes an analytics score, right? So your adoption score, security score, compliance management. So all are part of E3 and E5. When you scroll down, it talks about Viva Engage, Viva Connections, and then, then comes the most important thing. Our real thing starts. Now it talks about, uh, Identity and access management, which is nothing but your Azure AD. Now we'll come to see E3, M365 E3. If, you're, if your company has M365 E3, you have only Entra ID plan one. Okay. If you have E5, you have Entra ID plan two. A very, very, very important information right away here. A lot of difference, okay? Plan one, plan two is what you get. And then rest is all about the internal features that each thing happen, uh, features happen, okay? So as you can see, the risk-based conditional access and identity protection is only part of E5, which is your plan two. Conditional access is there, but again, identity protection is not there. 
pim privileged identity management is not there access reviews which i was speaking of, that is not there but rest everything is common now comes our own intune and intune which is our endpoint and app management say your company has e3 and e5 what it is covering it is only covering intune plan 1 okay so what you see in e3 and e5 all of the intune is already covered but intune plan 2 and intune suite and intune advanced is not there you need to buy it correct autopilot is covered yes application management device management everything is covered under e3 and e5 next comes our access broker we now discuss defender for cloud apps for e3 it only discovery does the discovery but actual defender for cloud apps you only get it for e5 okay see here the dots next comes the dlp so if you are a part of m365 security team i'll tell you you will do these jobs daily dlp for emails and files dlp for teams and chats is again the same thing so in next comes the information protection you will see only very few things works on information protection but if you have e5 most of the things work and then comes the threat protection so this is our defender license so here is our defender defender for endpoint plan 1 is a part of e3 and now defender for endpoint plan 2 is a part of e5 and also this you can see the dot here if it comes down it is called e5 security so e5 security is a separate license covering only security products okay that is a different thing so under m365 you have so many features and based on your subscription you are covered say for example you you have this is how it works you have e3 in your organization you have e3 because i want only e3 i am that is enough suddenly you realized you want e5 sorry plan 2 only defender for plan 2 i need additional i want all e5 but only additional and that is where you buy something called as an add on okay you have e3 which is basic and that is where you get add on subscriptions and now within add on subscription you can check what you can buy what you cannot buy can i buy defender for endpoint plan 2 yes i can buy you see it is showing plus so you can buy plan 2 okay intune plan 1 you can buy intune plan 2 you can buy you can add on you see the thing about intune here three lines right with e3 and v5 you only get plan 1 but if you want plan 2 even if you are a e3 or e5 you still need to buy it intune suite e5 or e you still need to buy it intune remote help you need to buy it privilege management you need to buy it because we are covering all of these topics okay in our training privilege management uh, remote help intune suite all of this uh, epm and all so we still need to buy it okay by buying a basic intune all of these you'll continue to use everything nothing has changed for last 8 years you will get all the features but these are all the new things that have been added to intune by microsoft wants to get revenue out of it because these are separate products these are products that are replacing some other third party product in your organization right the remote help that you see it is replacing your home guard it is replacing your uh, uh, team weaver eh? all that apps right so you are paying license and you are only paying half year so same thing pim cyber arc pim is your privilege and identity access you are replacing the product and that's why they want money for it so this is your master page of what you get and what you don't get i'm talking about basic licensing whether you have it or whether you don't have it again comparison is different what is defender for plan 1 plan 2 again you need to understand defender so that you can tell okay these are all uh, things i get in defender for plan 1 and these are the things you get in defender for plan 2 okay so if it is still confusing please let me know i'll just make it much simpler do you all get some do you all have any questions now uh, raj no. i had a question like uh, how can we get this uh, how you got this uh, like for oh, this sheet that page the sheet yeah okay i'll uh, no i'll tell you that 
right away. Okay. So any question? Yeah, go ahead. You say M three sixty five compare plans in Google E three versus E five. You'll probably see that compare M three sixty five enterprise plans. Click that one. And once you click that one, you can scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and you see this one, get full comparison table. So this is where you get it, okay? Whenever you need information, you directly go live and get it, okay? This will be a running document, a live document. Don't save it and then start using it because every four or five months, they keep changing something else. Okay. Any you. other questions? What's additional in Intune? Uh... P two, uh, like, yeah. I I just I've only yeah. only seen P one as as of now. Is there anything additional there? And I'm, I'm sure there are, but yes, there are. Okay. So again, uh, license available for Intune. If you go and find it again, let me tell you here. So if as I was just saying, right, you will get Intune Plan One mm -hmm. if you have the following subscriptions. Correct. If you have the following licenses, you will get this plan one. Right. But if you want plan two, you need to buy it. If you want Intune Suite, you need to buy it. But let's see what is this comparison. If you click here, it will now talk about what are all these. Okay. So this is your basic stand. Uh, sorry, uh, this is not your uh, plan one. Okay. But if you want something add, so into endpoint privilege management. You get it in Intune Suite. Enterprise app management. You can either buy it separately as a standalone okay, by paying some price, or you can get it as a in the Intune Suite. You don't get it plan two. Plan two only covers these three products. You see, this one, this one, this one. You know what are all these? These are mobile device specialized managements. Okay. Some advanced mobile device management, like you no know, tunnel for application management. So probably most of them don't need these, okay? But if you're a proper Windows management guy and you want to explore only lesser price Microsoft tools, so this is what you buy above and beyond. I mean, above, uh, one second, I'll just uh, mute. Supervisor, you need to set you five like Yeah, sorry, I mean, okay. So these are all the products you get for Intune, Intune Suite. Okay, so only these, these you will get it here. Okay, you cannot buy, if you want Intune Suite, there's nothing like direct buying. First, you need to have plan one, that is a prerequisite. And after that, whichever you want, you can buy it. You see Cloud PKI, okay, you can either buy standalone or if you buy Intune Suite, everything comes along with it. Okay, so remote help, advanced analytics, Okay, enterprise app management. So if you want to see more, okay, you can start reading about it. Okay, so this is what privilege management does, like you know, helping your organization board using running and least privilege methods. Enterprise app management, a very, very, very uh, mostly asked, eagerly waiting, all of this. Okay, so it is nothing but Microsoft itself has come up with a catalog of very popular applications where they manage, package, deploy, and update how wonderful it is right it is getting rid of your entire packaging team now in future at least and that's a part of intune suite yeah yes so for us who don't have the access to the itune uh, to the itune to the intune uh but we have the uh, test access to the azure portal can we maybe uh Temporary access uh, to this resource through some test license or? Yes, I mean, see, I mean, uh, I would suggest uh, two things. So I would suggest you all how to get into a license, right? So what you can actually do is click on here, go to any page, any website page. Okay. So go, go to Google, basically. So most of the Microsoft products, Almost all the products comes with a trial license. 
okay every product say for example today the first time if you are looking at trial in tune trial in tune that's it okay so try in tune for free you can click here okay so you can go again sign up for intune for free so this is your intune setup account page navigate and this tells you what to do it gives you a one month free trial today and you can extend it for another one month i think so basically you'll get for 60 days okay so this is a one free option the other one i'm not sure if it's still valid there is something called ems e5 trial okay so this is another option so ems e5 trial nowadays i'm not for some reason i'm not seeing this trial option but there should be a way okay this is microsoft intern for free and then advanced uh, okay there should be some other way okay so this is enterprise mobility and uh, e5 so ems is nothing but enterprise mobility and security okay so uh, uh, it covers four different products, Azure AD Premium P2, Intune, uh, Advanced App Protection, uh, ATP, uh, sorry, Threat Protection, uh, ATP, and then Defender for Cloud Apps, okay? So earlier, everyone, like, you know, everyone used EMS E5 subscription, but I'm not sure why I don't see that as a page. And whenever I click, it says, like, you know, try only for Intune for free because no one wants to try EMS E5, okay? Everyone only wants Intune. Okay? So that is where they went to EMS E5 and did it. But you can still do it, okay? So once you have access to it, what do you go? People who want uh, admin dot, there is something called purchasing services, right? Admin dot, uh... sorry. Let me share that page. So any account, if you have an Azure account, Azure AD comes with, Azure AD is a free guy, free service, right? You all know so and people and let me tell you one thing okay so people who have not worked on intune at all and this is the first time that you are getting the feel and look of all that okay this is the first time that hearing i would strongly suggest not to attend this session okay so i have another session where i'm explaining the basics of uh, intune basics means uh, l1 to l2 okay the normal day-to-day -day administration levels or you want to start there because i can take up a lot of free time to have, ask all these questions the assumption here right now, okay, so this is, is uh, the assumption here is everyone knows to some extent, they know how to get trial accounts, they have tested devices, they have seen Intune, how it works, okay? So if you're not worked on Intune at all, on how to get the licensing, how to go to trial account, how to enroll devices, how to do all of this, then I would suggest you attend the other session that I am doing it. You can contact Amit again for the same thing, okay? But anyways, so to answer all this, you will have something called as admin center, and for admin center, there is something called as billing and there is something called purchase services. And this is where you can start buying products for trial, okay? Only trial. Select any product, okay? Say for example, you want to try a Defender, right? People who have already have uh, Intune, they can come here, admin.microsoft.com. You see, Defender for Business Trial. And for and this won't come for trial, okay? They won't buy it. It's a very, very expensive license. Defender for Endpoint Plan 2 is a very expensive license. You'll not get it. So you can check uh, somewhere. Defender for Business uh, Vulnerability. This is more than enough, okay? You can just go for Defender for Endpoint Server. No. Defender for business, no. Defender for endpoint, maybe this will give you a trial, I think. Okay, we'll only see buy here. As you can see, it's a 435 rupees or this is per year, okay? Or you'll, uh, this is Defender for business is fair enough, okay? So you'll get to know some idea, okay? You can start for free trial here. You'll get some 25 licenses. It'll be valid for 60 days. So you can buy any product here. 
okay not just this any product you can search okay you can search intune and you can buy intune suite as well okay see so intune plan one plan one plan one plan one plan two i don't know where it is plan two yeah intune suite intune plan two click on details here and click on try now okay click on try now you'll get trial okay i think you can get e5 trial as well right yes which one there is no e5 for intune so you can get m365 e5 developer yes. account okay you don't you don't get there's nothing like trial for m365 e5 you get m365 e5 uh i think if you create developer. let's say an yeah developer account okay what is the developer account right a developer account is usually facilitated by microsoft to develop some plugins and applications for office applications like but you know, some i think kind of, uh, yeah teams. i think but but i think microsoft has stopped uh, activating new developer accounts uh, right yeah that's okay no Maybe. recent yeah okay then i am not sure then okay so that is how we all used it and learned long back So it's a one year license okay so it gives you intune it gives you all the other office applications yeah, it's actually yeah it's, yeah it's like 90 days license recently it was 90 days you could actually extend it of course but yeah, yeah. EMS i think it used to be 90 one days and then yeah, like... ems again went on 30 days intune started 90 days again they came back to 30 days but you can extend it another 30 days right and i think if you create a, a let's say azure trial uh, account from there if you go to azure ad i think there is there is the option to uh, enable e5 uh, microsoft uh, 36 microsoft e5 license there 365 uh, yeah e5 yeah you have the option i think i don't know if they disable it now but they definitely used to have it have used it in the past so come here and then if you go to licenses yeah and then Uh, I think free trial. No, go go to all products maybe. Yeah, that's where. Yeah. So this is only okay. You get they no no they stopped it now I think maybe. But they yeah, definitely. So what it says is if it. you would like to purchase subscription directly from Nexo, please go to. Yeah, that's just about the purchasing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it this definitely... is only purchasing only because we are in the Azure AD page. It yeah. gives you purchasing for extending the entire IDP too, and also uh, governance. Okay, but if you look at all the products, this is one way to look at all the products. If you look at, I have all of these products with all of these licenses, and these are assigned, and these are available. Yeah, maybe because you already have those licenses, it doesn't give you the option. That could be a reason. No, I don't. I I I don't think so. There is an option to uh, extend because every time you come here and do something here, it will redirect to us to a management page. And if you click here. and uh, this again like you know it doesn't give us the page it will redirect to this purchase services this is your page where you need to buy buy and extend your subscriptions let's quickly check on my account i mean i've used it in the past so i wouldn't Maybe, have yeah. the option yeah. but yeah but let me just quickly check okay so any other questions See if, if if you want you know uh, like you know normally trial version will be there for thirty days you know if if you're looking for almost for one year, um, then what is the best uh, uh, you know uh, license we can go uh, with the minimum uh, license? Uh, I don't it depends want... again. Uh, yeah, it depends I don't again. Do what do you want to do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because normally what happens, right? If you go for the trial version, it will be for thirty days or something like that. But in that time. will not be able sometime will not be able to you know but do the testing and the other kind of labs and all things if we if we if if we need a lab for for a year you know uh, uh, in, in that case probably you know we can spend uh, more yeah, time and said, do that yeah, yeah. yeah yeah see as i said right so if you are buying two or one or licenses again it is really not expensive you can buy year which will come up to 3000 or 2500 indian rupees so uh the easiest yeah. license see again it depends what you want to learn if you want to only use intune and intune advanced so that's only license you need to buy but i would still suggest go for ems e5 ems e5 for a year yeah. for a year or not more than three licenses one for admin one for test account two or three okay. but uh instead of that 
try using different email addresses mm -hmm. okay don't buy it so you will have so many email so, accounts right explore with all the email addresses it's just takes 5 minutes to get a trial account yeah yeah okay raj i have a question actually it may sound uh maybe stupid uh, or dumb nothing I mean, you can yeah, but... with many other session eh? no questions are dumb and all okay yeah i'll yeah. say the same thing no questions are dumb the some want to hear the answers even for the those questions so let's say if i only uh, purchase an add on let's say uh, intune suite yeah i have uh, e3 fiber business premium where i already have the intune p1 so if i uh, purchase an add on for uh, intune suite so it means as an admin i will get all the all the features like for example if i talk about the uh, this uh, i think we were talking about the enterprise application catalog so i'll get the access to that enterprise application catalog right yes so is it like i can use those so as far as i understand yes. just looking at the, that overview of it it's like when i am uh, if i need to push uh, a win a win a win 32 app uh, to the users i'll have to package it right but this uh, it's i mean yeah like if i don't yeah. use that catalog i still have to do it like p1 right correct, correct. yeah with this uh, uh, catalog i get I'll, I'll probably get a list of all the uh, the uh, you know uh, common applications and i can just choose it and it will give me the option to just install it push it right so correct. will uh, so as an admin if i have only single uh, license i'll get the access to the catalog can i use it uh, for to, to install it for the only one user yes oh, so it will only work with one user yeah one user yes okay it's not like you know you buy it for a tenant yeah i understand yeah it's only for for it's, user basis uh, yeah. users if you want to use a single application also for five users you need to buy five licenses okay all right yeah So just a second. Uh, turn, 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 turn. Okay. So let me know if you're able to see my screen again. One more question from my side. Please. Yes, please. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, for the access with different uh, email accounts, uh, last time I've experienced uh, the issue when I used the different emails, which I created for uh, educational purposes to be able mm -hmm. to continue working on this. I got the error or the issue that uh, my Visa card was registered on different emails, so I couldn't uh, register again. Do you maybe, did you saw that error before or? No, I do. I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not, okay, I've not seen their errors. I'm not sure if someone else seen as error. You know, if that's an account, then you can go to the account, delete your, uh, the old card and come back, right? Yes, 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 yes. But there is a time, I think, uh, bounded to that card because the deletion of the data is, uh, I think, two weeks or one month. 45 days. Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe. So first of all, okay. Um, I'm still not sure if for a trial account, it asked a credit card. How about others? Uh, I don't think so. It asks for a credit card. Nope. It will not ask. For a trial account, yeah, but for Defender, I think it will ask uh, even for a plan one. I'm not sure because when you try to extend and see the trial, it will tell you even for a trial option, you need to verify your credit card information, and they'll say we'll not charge for it. You can always disable it. We'll ask you. We'll send you an email. All that is there, but for plan one, I don't think so. It'll ask, but maybe recently, see the problem. All this happened in last two years because, you know, uh, everyone started using uh, for educational purpose. And because the co-pilot is now introduced, uh, there is always a crunch for the computing power in the data centers. Okay, so everything has changed in last one year. We all used to get like, you know, six months, eight months, one year, multiple developer accounts. Not, I have not paid a single rupee or for the license other licensing renewal so with maximum two to three accounts i use it for four five years so most of them did that way but nowadays because of this so much of uh, 
time limitation and then creating different environments, creating different accounts, you might be tempted to buy like, you know, minimum licenses. Okay, so that is also fine. But I would suggest you all to use your uh, customers or customer, your test tenants, if you are working in a live environment, if you are not, yeah, it's always good to have one proper internal environment for at least six months or five months where you, until you do a deep learning. So you, you will suggest to go pay as you go? Fine. There is no pay as you go. Okay, so the, uh, it's like infra, it's not like an infra where you do a pay as you go thing. So you actually do something called as uh, per month license. Okay. So per month license is what is there. Or I would still say completely try out with a new email address. Very, very uh, like, you know, because one month passes just like that, right? So you'll not even, by the time you start, you're working on your environment, your your, your license will like, be expired. So I would simply say three months is what minimum is what is required. Okay. So any other questions? So we'll talk about that uh, next. You can try, okay? So the thing about trial accounts, setting up in environment, right? I would suggest you all to work in the background, okay? There is no ready-made straightforward link where I can tell you like, you know, this is where you go because a lot of things keeps changing. Okay. As you know, like I didn't knew that the developer account was now stopped. Okay. So you can just try Googling within four, five, six pages or some, they will let you know how to extend the trials, how to do the trials, how to do tricks on how to do it. Okay. So all that is uh, working hard. Okay. So when you do that work hard, you will come to know what, how to, uh, you'll, know, you'll get some idea about licensing and trial accounts and admin controls and then admin.microsoft.com how to create what do you get how to create users how to assign licenses okay that is a little bit of homework that you all can do but uh, because it's since it's a little bit of second level of training that i'm doing i don't want to go back to trial creations and a license assignments okay so again uh, uh what i'm not sure i have time but anyways i'll extend another five minutes so this is again uh while i'm here uh, it's very uh, thing is to understand that it's a huge investment in any organization when it comes to security, right? So you'll have different people to decide which products to buy, which solutions to buy, and which whom you actually report, right? At the top of an, any hierarchy is your uh, CTO, right? Your CTO, and then he'll have a CISO, like you know, cyber security risk uh, information security officer. So and those again will have different kind of people, like you know, different uh, security for infra, security for e email collaboration, security for endpoints, all that again. Okay? And then you'll have a project manager, program management report. So underneath you will come actually a technical guy who need to you who are answerable to all of those people. Okay, they will not know what tools they are using, they will not know which product you are using. Probably they know, but they may not know how it functions and uh, what are the features what are their capabilities okay they'll suddenly come and say patch this machine from intune they'll not even know intune doesn't know but patching how to patch okay those people are pretty old they'll not know how may, how new technologies work what are the capabilities of new technologies half of their processes are bit pretty old okay they don't match the recent uh products evolution Right, because I was like, you no, know, four or five years back, I was working in a company where my, uh, like, you no, know, my manager and his manager, who was a CISO, has asked me, How do you back up all of your Intune data into your tape drive? So that was a question to me, right? So that was a 57 year old guy who was asking me a question, uh. Like, you know, you're an Intune product specialist and you tell me how do you back up your all of the Intune configuration and data that you have worked on this project for a long time so that if you leave, how will you get access? So that was his question, okay? So you get what I'm saying, right? So those are the questions that are asked because those are the people you interact with. Okay, so because he's probably a person who has worked 20 years back where all of the data is backed up in tape drives. Nowadays, no one uses tape drives. 
okay they are using it for a different critical mission critical purposes like you know banking all this uh, like you know white house your uh, nascom all those they use for backing up some very limited but not for all such things right so you will get to interact with very old people who don't understand so it is up to you to talk from basic layman terms to mid level to advanced to think your convincing and talking skills are very important right so to make your life simpler that is what i'm saying okay so some people may understand so you need to explain it in a simple terms so the whole purpose of this slide is uh your your being in an it operations okay so you have multiple things to look at it one is the cloud data your endpoint vulnerability attacks and your one point management and your infra management and your application security it's so again a deep deep dive when i'm saying application security there's a separate products called as defender for apps and defender for devops and defender for iot all of these things okay so where you do this application security most of the applications are now hosted within windows servers in azure linux servers in azure okay so banking applications critical almost every product nowadays is in cloud right so nothing is in your local data center so he will have so many things to take care right your ciso and your cyber security architect it's not just about your endpoint for him give me the report show me green okay that is a, that is their job right give me a report show me green give me a, show me green color everything in clean color everything is secure so that is a risky job that he is there right so you cannot fight with them you cannot really argue you have to be the communication between you your uc team and the security team should be very smooth and seamless okay so yeah so all of this is fine one final thing if you all have time uh is this okay uh, okay i'll just stop it here uh, because again it will take another 15 minutes so I'll, we'll continue this session tomorrow where uh, the uh, the agenda for tomorrow is again uh two two things parallelly okay so we'll just talk about we have not even started defender for endpoint that i can assure you okay so a uh, defender for endpoint is what we are starting tomorrow so we'll just talk both things okay what is what are the six features that it has and how do we configure that in our systems and how do we integrate okay i'm only talking about the service part if time permits or probably in the next class we'll talk about onboarding of the devices and see how it actually works on the device and how it reports back to the service your uh, cloud console <clears throat> so that's all i have for today so if you all have any question we'll talk, yeah. take it up tomorrow okay, okay. Any, yeah, any quick questions? Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, just uh, since we are talking about L3, L4, and all this, now uh, PowerShell scripting is becoming a part of part of this uh, uh, job. I mean, job profile L3, L4, and all things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, any any light on that? Uh, anyway, it's not going to cover over here, but you know, kind of. Uh, I don't uh, think so. Nowadays, you don't you you need to learn PowerShell script. You have AI tools. When you ask, it gives you a PowerShell script. And I you have like, so you many know, third th third party. Uh, bloggers who you ask they'll write you a, a powershell script you don't have to in see if you want it you can get it no one is are you any, is anyone questioning that you whether you know powershell scripting or you are powershell scripting all you have to know is l1 so that you can read and modify mm -hmm. right so 80 percent of the code is already generated by github or so many free third-party ai tools yeah, because some some interviews and all they they ask about you know do you know the powershell scripting knowledge uh, kind of yeah, they will ask, but I won't ask. But yeah, so <laughs> it is typically asked by the people uh, who come from packaging background and who work on SSM. The reason why uh, the backend tool for SSM itself is a PowerShell script. Okay, the agent itself internally runs a PowerShell script. So that is, uh, and then <clears throat> a lot of customization things can be done with PowerShell script. Anything yeah. that is not there in the out of the box, they think that they can do partial scripts. And uh, yeah, it can be learned. Very, very good thing to learn partial script because anything when asked, if it is not there in the product, you can actually achieve it. 
Okay, so okay. 60, 70 percent of the work you can get it from outside, and you can modify it, you can change it, you can build your own, and you can not even you will know whether you can do it or not. Okay? Yeah. So it's a good thing if you think that you have time to learn. I'm not saying don't learn. Very important thing to learn also. If you are only focusing on Windows management. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I can also tell you that uh, if you're in a large organization, uh, where is, uh, there are college freshers who write wonderful partial scripts. Okay. Oh. So that, uh, it depends, like, you know, how, if you are a single person handling many of the things, it's good to learn. But a packager can write very good partial scripts because, uh, like, you know, with this generation, uh, they, they are much faster in writing scripts. They know Python scripts as well. I'm talking about a 20-year-old guy. Okay. Raj, uh, my question is, will you be sharing the uh, Zoom recordings with us? Or... Recording? Huh? Oh, yeah, all the recording, uh, recording you'll get access. Every recording okay. you'll get access, uh, read-only access, lifetime. Okay? I mean, whenever you want, that is what I heard, I came to know. Okay, okay. okay. You'll not okay. be able to download, but uh, you can just click read the links only. and read all uh, whenever you want. You can just... We can view it whenever you, you can view it anytime. Yes. Okay. Download so again, also. When I say anytime, okay, within two years, uh, all okay. of the information that I share will not be relevant for you. It will become old and change. So that is another challenge that you all have. So no matter what you learn, it will be there only for three years. Okay. So okay, okay, got it. three years is more than. Enough. Yeah. So it the will thing be outdated is by then. outdated by then. I'm not saying that you'll have access for only three years. I'm saying that whatever you learn, you'll have, it will be only valid for three years. Not and I still idea. pick, I still picked up the latest things. Okay. What, what yeah. I'm saying, I think I'll still cover a little bit of security copilot, copilot. I'll ensure that like, you know, uh, outside there, no, not many people. The reason why to, um, why I'm doing this training is it is helping me and it's helping everyone who wants to really learn that M365 security. Okay, Absolutely. that is the future. Okay, that's the only thing I can say. Uh, you will think about this statement after four five years. Okay, your uh, you. job security will be very good. Thank you, Rod. Thank you so much. So, any questions? We'll continue tomorrow. Okay, guys. Yeah, thanks everyone. Have a nice uh, weekend. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. 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 Let's meet tomorrow. We will be connecting tomorrow, right? We Let's are meet. meeting tomorrow, same time, three o'clock. Yes. Okay. Great. So two hour session, Raj. This is right. Uh, two hours. Yes, two hours, three to five, India time. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Raj. Bye. Yeah. See you Thank tomorrow. You. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.